I was just doing the They're doing it on purpose. They are. I feel like data. Did everybody get all that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that okay, good. So I'll see you guys later. Um, so change management. Um, here's the issues with change management. And before you guys start reading all that and not paying attention to what I'm saying, because it has nothing to do with that slide, so that would be kind of silly. <coughs> You've got a dev server and a live server. At least those two different things, I would hope. Please tell me you're not making changes to the live server directly without like any testing or anything else. Great, so I'm not the only one. Good. Uh, so Drupal has an awful lot of stuff that's not code. So you, a lot of your development on your site has nothing to do with code that you write. What blocks are enabled, where they sit, in what themes they're on, what view, the, the views that are created. I mean, yeah, you can export those to code and import them elsewhere. Panels that are making it even more, it, it seems like more than half of the development on a Drupal site has nothing to do with writing code. And it's all configuration and, and making changes, which is great because it allows a lot of non-coders to really do some powerful stuff in Drupal. That's excellent. It's a nightmare to manage in a real production setting where you're trying to maintain the separation of a dev server and a live server. Just that. Now imagine you have, oh, I also have a staging server that I need to put stuff on that includes the live content and my dev changes so that the business owner can go through and verify that yes, this stuff works and this is good. And now I've got three or four developers that are all working on this and all have Drupal running on their own laptop or local dev machine somewhere that they're making changes and now I need to get those changes all to one server for a dev server so that the view that I just created is available to, to Bob over here who's creating this other, it, it, it starts to get really complicated. And there's all sorts of great solutions for this for code. If, there's Subversion, there's CVS, there's Git, there's a million different source code management tools that do a great job of merging multiple developers and pushing them all up to one place and there's deployment tools and all kinds of stuff you can do with that. Database changes are harder and they're a lot more complex because you can't just take a copy of the database and store it in your source code repository every time you make a change. For one thing, some databases are pretty large. Working on a project, non Drupal project, but year, several years ago, we had multiple terabyte databases. Every time we made a change, we couldn't store a dump and send it to everybody. It wasn't going to happen. So, being able to make a data change to the structure, hey, I, I installed this module on my local dev server. Now, when I check that module in and I upload it to my staging server or my production server, and now I check it out. All the stuff that the module ran as far as the installation and creating databases and all that, none of that happens again because I did it over here and I, I, some of my tables moved but now I've added this and it, it's a real pain in the butt to do. So we have this problem a lot. One thing that everybody tries to solve, they go, oh, we'll just take a copy of the DB, I'll just take a copy of the, the, the production DB. I'll copy it to my dev server, I'll make all my changes, I'll do everything, and I'll upload that back up. Now, unless you did that in the span of about 20 seconds, when there was nobody using your site, and nobody leaving a comment, and nobody registering for an account, and none of this other stuff happening, now your production, your, your dev database is out of sync with your production database. That's changing all the time. More than just, I mean, I've got new content, new users, new user content, but there's all kinds of things that are happening. There's cron jobs running for search and re-indexing things. Yeah, those would happen again and re-index, -re but why make your server do work twice? There, there's all kinds of different things that happen on the production site while you're doing this. And this is only if you're making changes quickly. Hey, I copy it down, I tested it, hey, does it work, I'm going to put it up. Great. What if this is days, weeks, or even months of development work? to handle. You can't just take the database and copy and replicate, replace it and, and be done with it. So, 
what you do is called change management. And it's a whole practice area in software development called change management. And it's something that doesn't happen a whole lot with Drupal. Um, so what you do is you capture the changes you make in development. And then you need to make those changes happen somewhere else the exact same way they happened in development. You need to, if you don't do it the same way, you end up with something that's different and what you were looking at at dev now doesn't match the staging and what you did on staging doesn't match the production. And somebody came through and they did all their testing on staging and you forget to make one little setting change on production and now the, the, the QA, the testing they did is invalid. Oh, now by the way, we pushed that out and whoops, we didn't want to do that yet. That, that we, we pushed it all out and there was a press release that was in there that shouldn't have been. Or uh, we, what we didn't notice is some joker had gone through and added in the dev database all this great uh, you know, <laughs> joke content and, and uh, now, now it's got an upload control production site. And, and I hear people laughing like that's never happened anymore. <laughs> And so you need to like go back, oh, gee, I need to roll back and now my code is so intertwined with the, I've uploaded templates that work with a particular view I've created and now if I roll back the database, now my templates don't work because it's expecting data that's not there or vice versa, I roll back the code and now I've got views that are unthemed. And, and I, I don't, do you do your releases during the day or late at night or when, when do you typically do your releases? When do you do them? Be honest. When does it happen? After midnight. I, I hear a lot of silence. There's a lot of people that do it at like 2 o'clock in the afternoon on a Thursday. <laughs> or worse, at 5.10 on Friday right before you leave for a long weekend. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so if you're doing these late at night, um, do you want your entire development staff having to be there for a release just in case something goes wrong? Yes. I mean, you might want one or two developers there in case something goes wrong. I hear the contract developers going, yeah, that's overtime, that's extra. But <laughs> the business owner, you don't want a staff of developers. You don't want to ask your guys to stay up until midnight just so you can roll out a release and go, yeah, everything looks good and go home now. I mean, that, that burns out developers. Nobody wants to be doing that. So those are the reasons you need change management. 